Hello and welcome back to part 4 of CNC Lake Programming using Mastercam X7. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to groove in Mastercam and how to use the menus to pick different types of groove geometry and also how you can create a groove without even having geometry. So let me show you how that's done. Alright so here we're looking at the part that we're going to be using for this video and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to the area with the two grooves and then the first thing I'm going to do is change it to a wireframe and turn off the solids. It's going to be a little bit easier to pick the geometry, so that's what we'll do. All right, so first thing we're going to do is right click next to the red arrow in the operations manager. We're going to wand over late tool pans and pick a groove. Now we have several different options the way we define our groove and we're going to start with two points. Uh, you can see this is kind of a square shape, which, which is what we have right here. So once you select that, you need to click OK. Then it wants you to pick the two points. And so we're going to pick the top of the groove. And then it creates like a window and it lets snap to the bottom left side of the groove. All right, and it says Enter when done. Then we go into the menu where we pick our tool. And we have selected tool number four with a 10,000 tool nose radius and it is 125 thousandths wide. Alright, so the feed rate we're going to go ahead and put it at 3 thousandths. Uh, the finish we're going to leave at 2 thousandths per rev. Service feet for roughing is 400 and then service feet for finishing will make it 500 with a max RPM of 2500 so we reduce the chance of chatter at the bottom of the groove. All right, so we're gonna turn the coolant down real quick, and then we'll go ahead and put a check mark in forced tool change, and we'll call this a square groove. All right, and then we go over to the next tab that says groove shape parameters. Now over here on the left, you can see we are using a tool that is 90 degrees and perpendicular to our groove, which will be the OD. And you, you can see you can select different types of orientations of the tool. And so we're going to pick OD, which is 90 degree angle, and leave that be. Alright, and then this section is used if you don't have geometry or if you want to add geometry to your existing geometry. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Right now we're going to go right into our groove rough parameters. Alright, so bidirectional cut direction is what it's defaulting at. You can also go positive, you can see it goes from left to right and then the negative right to left or in the negative direction. But we're going to start with bidirectional, meaning that it's going to start in the middle of the groove and then move in both directions. Alright, then our stock clearance is going to be 0.1, so that's where it starts feeding into the groove. It's going to take 75% of our tool width, which is about 96 thousandths, and then it will back off 20% of the tool width as it's at the bottom of the cut. Then the stock amount, if there is any, you would put in this field, and then of course we're going to leave 5 thousandths on X and 5 thousandths in Z for finish. Alright, so for this particular type of groove, we're going to leave the groove walls in steps. So there's no smoothing because there is no geometry to smooth. Alright, so then we go right into the finish groove parameters. And you can see we can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. I don't know that that matters much, but you may have some preference. Alright, so the finish step over is going to be 100 thousandths. We're using a 125 thousandths wide tool, so that will be a good step over. Stock to leave on X and stock to leave on Z is going to be zero because we're finishing. And then we're going to do a middle overlap, or you can select overlap. And we're going to go ahead and select a middle overlap, and then we're going to give it 20 thousandths. So there is no chance of a little ridge left in the center of the groove. All right, then lead in, you can see on the first pass, it wants to come in at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to go ahead and straighten that out. And then on the second pass, it wants to come in at a 45 degree angle, so I'm going to also straighten that out. All right, so roll cutter around corners to none. And the compensation type is going to be left to computer, because that works best. 
all right so we're gonna go ahead and click on OK and there was a quick preview right there but let's go ahead and see that a little bit slower and let's slow this down here and let's see what that looks like all right so we should be um, roughing right down the middle and then moving to the side leaving five thousands on Z and five thousands on X you can also see that 20 percent move right there as it retracts now it finishes you can see it finishes the wall and then finishes the floor and then overlaps in the middle all right so that takes care of the square groove all right so let me show you how to add some pecking to that first cut right down the middle all right so when that tool plunges right down the middle of that groove we want to add some pecking so what we're going to need to do is go back into parameters and then select the groove rough parameter tab and right here in the lower right hand corner you see where it says peck groove we're going to put a check mark in there and then click on peck groove now you can see we have a check mark right here where it says peck on the first plunge only when you want to make sure that that is pecked otherwise it's going to peck on every plunge alright so we're going to do a depth cut of 0.05 and then we're going to put a check mark right here where it says it retract moves we're going to select incremental and make that fifteen thousandths so it'll back up fifteen thousandths every time it does a fifty thousandths peck alright so that will break up the chip nicely and also relieve some of the pressure on the tool so let's take a look and see what that looks like alright we have a red X so we're going to go over here and say regenerate all dirty operations alright so it's done we're gonna take a look and let's watch that first move right there you can see it starts to pack so that is what we accomplished only just by turning on that pecking cycle alright so let's check out of that and let's move on to the next groove right next to it that has a little bit of geometry alright so we're gonna go ahead and right click again over here in the operations manager click on groove again and this time we're gonna select chain now you can kinda of see if you have an odd shape other than something rectangular or square you may want to pick chain alright so once that's selected you pick OK and then it wants you to pick the chain now I usually click on partial right here and then put a check mark in weight and then I'm gonna zoom in on my geometry and I'm going to pick the first piece of geometry of that groove and go all the way around until all that geometry is selected alright so then I say OK and again I'm going to pick tool number four which is the same tool we used in the previous example and we're going to set this to three thousandths and a finish of two thousandths a four hundred thousand service feet for the roughing and five hundred service feet for the finishing and then again the 2500 maximum speed alright and then we'll add a comment saying tapered groove alright so then we go back to groove shape parameters now you can see um, we are set at 90 degrees perpendicular to our groove so that's good to go then we'll go to groove rough parameters bi-directional will still do I'm working from the center out 100,000 stock clearance right where it starts feeding 75% of the tool is how much we do on the step over with a 20% back off move at the bottom of the groove no stock amount in this part otherwise you would put it right there and again we leave 5,000 on X and 5,000 in Z now we'll go ahead and select smooth because now we have some geometry and we're gonna go ahead and leave this peck groove set at 50 thousandths for the first plunge only with a 15 thousandths retract move to break up the chips nicely alright so that's it for the rough groove parameters let's go to the finish groove parameters and again we can select counterclockwise or clockwise we leave 0 in X 0 on Z make sure that the lead in is like we want it now here we can probably leave the lead in and the lead out at an angle because we have 
angles on the ends so, so that will work out nicely all right so let's take a quick look at what this operation looks like let's zoom out a little bit and see it pecks right down the middle and then it's just a smooth cut as it roughs the rest of the uh, groove all right several passes right there you can see it comes in at an angle to rough then an angle to finish overlap in the middle and done all right so that's how we do a groove that has a little bit of a geometry so we pick the chain option for that all right so let's make a groove without selecting groove geometry so again we're gonna go right click right next to the red arrow wand over lathe groove and then we're gonna pick one point we click OK and I'm just gonna pick this one corner right here and then it says enter and when done so now we're done we're gonna use the same tool we're gonna leave everything like it is over here and we're gonna call this one point All right now we're gonna use the parameters in the groove shape parameters uh, we still are groove in the OD so that portion is good but now we're gonna fill in some parameters in these fields right here and watch it create geometry for us so the height of the groove or the depth of the groove is going to be 200 thousandths and let's go ahead and put a 30 thousandths radius at the top and we're going to put this at a 10 degree angle with a radius of 40 thousandths at the bottom we're going to make it 300 thousandths wide at the bottom now that's at the intersection points of the walls and then the radius at the top we're going to make 60 with a taper angle of 5 degrees on that side and then we're going to change it up just a little bit 0 0.015 radius at that corner now we can click on show geometry and you can see it is giving us a preview right there of what it's going to be cutting so it says save geometry we're going to go ahead and say yes and then we leave the parameters yeah that's all looking good finish parameters uh, that's all looking good too all right now let's go ahead and verify that and we can see we're gonna peck right down the middle and then step over getting all the material out so that's a smooth cut another smooth cut on that side leaving five thousandths in X and Z and the finish pass with an overlap in the middle alright so that gives you some options when trying to groove in a master cam X7 I hope that helped you again I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video